Have you guys ever woken up for an overlanding trip, gone to plug in your fridge and realized, oh crap, my portable battery is totally dead? Well, you may think to yourself, no big deal. I can just plug it into my car with the cigarette lighter and it'll charge right up. But that's a problem because you're only going to charge at 40 to 50 watts. And guess what? That's what your fridge is drawn, meaning your battery is going to be dead that entire trip. Well, then I'll just use my solar panel. When I'm stopped at camp, I'll be able to charge it up, no problem at all. Solar panels like these have a couple inherent issues for overlanding. The first one being that you have to be stopped or parked. Now, don't get me wrong, you can spend some money uh, and get solar panels either mounted to the top of your rooftop tent or to your hood or whatever, but for the other 90% of us, that's just not really a practical option. The second problem is that it has to be sunny or a relatively unobstructed view of the sky, which if you even look at where I'm at right now, uh, there is very little light hitting the solar panel. It's based on the fact that I'm parked under some shade here. With these reasons in mind, I think that solar is impractical for overlanding, and I have found a much, much better option for cheaper. Now, I know what you're thinking. Here comes a snake oil salesman. I paid for all of this myself. I found this online for about 50 to 60 bucks that allows me to charge at 200 watts per hour straight from my car battery. So let me show you what my setup is. So at the heart of this system is this 12 to 24 volt step-up converter. It takes 12 volts from my car battery and it doubles at the 24 volts. In doing so, it also halves the amps so the power remains uh, relatively constant per Ohm's law. So 16 amps is what we see on the input side. At 12 volts, it doubles it up to 24 volts and then it cuts those amps in half to eight amps. Well, why does this matter? If we look at the faceplate of my Blue Eddy battery here, for example, you can see that it can take anywhere between 12 and 20 volts DC and up to eight amps of current. Well, if we have the Blue Eddy charging straight off of my vehicle battery, not only being provided about 12 volts, you can see 12 times eight equals 96 watts maximum. But again, you're gonna lose some there in the gauge of the wire, the distance of the wire, uh, and the resistance within the system. However, if we take that same eight amp restriction, but we double the voltage, so we can bring up to 24 volts, what my step converter is doing, we can now provide 192 watts, which the Blue Eddy will happily take because it's still being provided at eight amps. For a lot of batteries, such as Blue Eddy, Jackery, Goal Zero, et cetera, they allow the highest amount of charge uh, rate at higher voltages. So if you charge it at just 12 volts, in other words, you plug your Jackery straight into your car via the cigarette lighter, for example, you may only see somewhere between 40 to 80 watts. But by raising the voltage up to 24 volts, you're actually allowing your charger to take advantage of the most amount of uh, charging power, thus allowing me to charge my Blue Eddy at 190 watts when compared to the 40 that I get by plugging it into the back of the Jeep. Now, a couple of nice features about the step converter as well as the low voltage cutoff. By the way, I'm gonna link all this uh, in my description below there, so don't worry about trying to write all this down. Uh, I'll give you all the Amazon links to these products, which is where I bought them all. But the step converter here has overvolt, undervolt, and overcurrent protection, as well as over temperature protection, and it does get hot. Uh, I've used it a little bit in the summer, and I haven't seen it cut out yet for temperature, but uh, it does get warm, so a uh, nice feature to have there. Additionally, the low voltage cutoff also has overvolt, overcurrent, and a temperature cutoff. It is nice to know, though, that it is monitoring the temperature, and again, cutting off if it becomes too hot. All right, now, as far as looking at this specific setup, I am not an electrician, and you can ask my wife who's holding the camera right now, but I'm definitely not qualified to give electrical advice. So what I really wanna do is just show you how I wire it together, uh, and then you can adopt it as it makes sense for your uh, setup there. So, I use 10 gauge wire, which should be sufficient for the uh, 16 amps that I'm seeing uh, at peak come through on 12 volt side. I wired it to the positive end of my battery with a circuit breaker here. I like this a lot because I can simply hit a switch here uh, and break this connection off if for any reason I need to disconnect it. Uh, reconnect that, it applies power to the low voltage cutoff here. The Victron has about eight different settings that you can set the, uh, the cutoff to. Since I have a yellow top AGM battery and I'm relatively conservative, I set it to 12 volts, uh, which is a, a safe cutoff, which will also ensure that I never have a dead battery as a result of charging my Blue Eddy. Sends power to this post, which goes into my step-up converter. The step-up converter has basically a positive and negative on the input and a positive and negative on the output. And then on the output side, which is in a nice wire loom here, uh, that goes all the way to the back of the Jeep. And this is about it. Okay, so how does the system actually work? Well, right now the Jeep is off and this battery is sitting somewhere between 12 to 13 volts. And at 12 to 13 volts, my charging system is offline as well. But once I start the Jeep, power, is applied and then it flows up into this Victron low voltage cutoff. 
The low voltage cutoff is sitting here using minuscule amounts of power and just waiting till 13 volts is detected. Once 13 volts is detected, it waits 30 seconds to ensure that that continues and then allows power over to this post here. It ensures that while the Jeep is running and my alternator is putting out that juicy 13 to 14 volts, I am capitalizing on it and I'm taking advantage of it. And even then, after I shut the Jeep off, when the battery is still above 12 volts, it will continue to provide power to my Blue Eddy until 12 volts is reached, at which point it will cut off the uh, step-up converter, thus saving my battery and ensuring that I never get too low a voltage for the, uh, the yellow top AGM battery that I have here. Okay, now that I've talked you through about how this all works and how it's set up, I'm gonna start the Jeep and we can actually go through and look at the process. Let's go check it out. All right, so the Jeep is started up. We're making 13.9 volts. And as we come back here, you can see I'm charging at 187, almost 190 watts. My fridge is also running at 43 watts. So as you'll see, I'm charging still at 140 watts net, uh, which this battery then will be fully charged from zero in about three, three and a half hours. Now, am I saying that solar has absolutely no applicability in overlanding? Well. No, because obviously if you're gonna be at camp for a few days and that kind of thing, where your vehicle's not gonna be turning, well, then it makes sense that you'd harness the power of the sun. But by being solely reliant on a solar panel like this, you're totally ignoring the greatest power generator that you have in your overlanding vehicle, which is your alternator. See, your alternator puts out way more power than your car actually needs in order to run. So imagine a world where you no longer have to worry about plugging in your Blue Eddy, your Jackery, your EcoFlow, your Gold Zero, whatever you use. You don't have to worry about plugging in the night before to charge it. You don't have to worry about pre-cooling your fridge while it's plugged into the wall power at your house. All you have to do, get your vehicle packed in the morning, you start her up. When you're charging at 200 watts, you can then plug your fridge in, even with your battery totally dead, get your fridge cooling while you're charging that battery. After you've driven three to four hours, if you have a capacity about 600 watts, similar to mine, your battery is charged, your fridge is cold. It's freaking awesome. Guys, this is super simple. It only cost me about $60 in parts and a couple hours to finagle. You can adapt this to many different kinds of setups. You could have the setup actually in your vehicle or put it under the hood like I did. Again, just to emphasize, I'm not an electrician and I'm not giving electrical advice. I just wanted to show you what I've been using and having great success with. I hope this helps. I'm Kevin with Rhino Off-Road, and we'll see you on the next one.